Assalamu alaikum and good morning. I'm Farhan Farooq, Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Services, covering Middle East and North Africa. Today, we're going to talk about governance and compliance at scale and how to achieve it. Before diving deep, let's talk about the agenda. We're going to cover first the governance, how to achieve it in AWS. Then we're going to dive deep, dive into the compliance. We're going to see how and what to expect when it comes to compliance at scale in AWS. And finally, we're going to see how compliance can become a business enabler function for your organization. First of all, why is there a need for governance at scale in a cloud? Governance is definitely a required function. But at scale, does it change? Are our traditional approaches are fine? Or we need to, you know, change things? Enterprises have had to make traditional compromises between the needs of builders and cloud IT. Builders love the speed and agility that AWS provides them. While central cloud teams want to govern with central controls, enterprises do not like to be forced to choose between either or R. They want both. The journey to the cloud adoption starts normally with POCs and experimentation, thereby you become overwhelmed, you say, you know what, let's go lift and shift. Migration happens. Finally, that there are the chances that you will end up in cloud sprawl and cost governance issues. As the footprint of AWS grows, concerns and security and operation becomes prominent. And IT is asked or forced to take over management of the AWS cloud environments. Right now, hold this a thought at the, at the last stage. When you do this, right, it is during this period that IT carrying the mantle of security and operations takes on guardians' mentality. I'm not saying that it is bad thing uh, because at AWS security is a, is our top priority. But when it becomes the only thing, it can cause friction. But the need is to have a less friction. The gate approach becomes challenging, thus creating an anti-pattern for cloud scaling. And therefore, we have a guardians of the gate problem. So what are the other signs that demands to have some sort of governance strategy that can scale your organization in cloud? Of course, we have discussed this, that your security team or your management team becomes a department of no or at least viewed as department of no, you can hire enough people to effectively manage your cloud up, cloud presence, right? So you have a shortage of resources due to costs or due to another day of resources. Request for accounts access seems to be going to, into a black hole, taking more time, you know, uh, 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 creating more friction. Your dev and test environment are required to be set up to meet the same approvals as your production environment. And then there is a problem, there is an issue, right? So when it comes to governance, bear in mind that there are three govern uh, three principles when it comes to uh, uh, governance at scale in AWS, especially. First one is align AWS accounts with the organization through common interface, or in short, we should we should be saying account management. Standardize and streamline provisioning, maintenance, and access control policies for many AWS accounts and workloads, right? Second thing is about ensure AWS accounts and workloads do not exceed budget, cost management. Accelerate security authorization, provide continuous monitoring and configuration management, and enforce security controls. With these three principles in mind, AWS offers a set of management and governance services to help our customers improve business agility and maintaining governance and control. Organizations want both. They want experimentation, they want to be productive, they want to be respond quickly to changes. At the same time, they want to be in control, be, in, be compliant, secure, and be able to provision. When RD deploys management and governance services on AWS, they can support innovation and provisioning bottlenecks, improve their security and compliance posture, enhance operational efficiency and reduce cost. So you don't have to choose between agility or control. You need and want both. 
So the service when it, uh, that comes to mind when it, when it is about governance at scale in AWS is AWS Control Tower, enabling day one with a self service, right? And AWS, uh, uh, this is a AWS service that offers the easiest way for organizations to set up and govern their AWS environment at scale. With Control Tower, can, uh, customers can enable, provision, and operate their environment uh, for business agility and good governance at scale. Let's look at what each of these mean. We'll start with enablement. Control Tower enables you uh, to set up a landing zone. Uh, it enables uh, uh, to create a centralized identity and access management, establishes guardrails for security compliance and operations, automate compliant account provisioning, and manage continuously over time. Right, this is the, uh, uh, when, when you start with Control Tower, you get these things by default. Let's dive into each one of these components. A landing zone is an AWS environment with multiple accounts that are configured in a way that uh, allow to multiple team and people across your organization to use AWS in a secure, scalable manner. It allows you to experiment iterate and migrate workloads into without having to worry about scalability or security uh, concerns as your cloud footprint grows, right? Because you don't have, you may start with one account, but as time grows, your strategy changes and you may require more accounts because you want to have a, a bif bifurcation probably based on uh, departments or uh, groups, teams or projects. Uh, it also provides a multi-account architecture. Uh, so once, when it is created first, you get two types of OU, core OU and, and, and custom OU. Core OUs basically have uh, a, a, are the baseline accounts that cannot be changed. For example, uh, account for, for uh, uh, logging, log collection, account for security, for example, and uh, shared services account. And in your custom account can create your own accounts. Uh, that is uh, sort of suitable for your uh, uh, business or, or organization architecture structure. But this is a multi-account framework uh, that is uh, that we have seen normally a pattern uh, when it comes to multi-account or deployed using AWS Control Tower. The blue boxes over here, you see these are uh, OUs or organization units. And between the, uh, below these blue boxes, you see there are uh, uh, triangles, uh, uh, which are basically accounts that you create within OUs, right? And the additional OUs group that accounts directly relate to the software development lifecycle. Life this includes the accounts for development and the accounts for staging process from earlier testing to the production. For example, Sandbox OU. This OU is for AWS accounts of individual developers in which they can learn and dive deep into AWS services. It means giving them more agility, more flexibility to ex for experimentation. Next is how you're gonna access, how you can simplify the access across these accounts. You don't want to use, uh, 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 you know, in order to go to in each account, we have to log in separately. What Control Tower offers is AWS single sign-on or SSO. It provides default directory for ad 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 identity, first of all. It is pre-configured groups and permission sites. And there's an option to integrate with your managed or on-premises Active Directory, right? So that user don't have to, you know, jump between the accounts using different username and passwords. They simply have one username and that can, uh, by using that, they can go to, to different accounts, provided that they have the access or right level access being given by that administration. Uh, Establish guardrails. Now, guardrails are very important concept. They are pre-configured governance rules uh, for security compliance and operations. Uh, they are expressed in plain English to provide abstraction over granular AWS policies. Uh, there are two types of uh, uh, guardrails: preventive and detective. Preventive, as the name implies, prevents these are the prevent po preventive policy violations uh, through enforcement. Implemented using uh, AWS CloudFormation and uh, 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 service control policies that can be implemented at the, at the organizational level or org level. Uh, 
or you'll have uh, detective guardrails. These are policy violations and alert in the dashboard implemented using AWS config rules. We're going to talk about AWS config rules in our next, se se uh, next section the, of this session. These are uh, mandatory and strongly recommended uh, guardrails for prescriptive guidance. And you can choose what you want, what you don't want, apart from mandatory one, right? You can easily select and enable on organizational units, as I said earlier. Uh, these are the few guardrail example. Uh, for example, uh, audit logs. So whenever a new account is created, you know it it, it ensures that the uh, AWS Cloud Trail and AWS Config is enabled by default, right? Uh, and, and if somebody tries to disable them, the administrator can be notified, and they can create other action as well to re -en 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 enable them. So let's talk about provisioning. How to get a standardized provisioning mechanism when you create different accounts? Control Tower comes with built in account factory. What I mean by account factory is uh, the component that provides a template to standardize account provisioning. It's configurable networks, for example, uh, configurable network settings uh, such as sub subnets and IP addresses, automatic enforcement of account baseline and guardrails. Published to AWS Service Catalog. And hey, wait a minute, what do you mean by Service Catalog? Service Catalog provides a single location for you to centrally manage catalogs of pre approved resources. Products are individual AWS resources, and portfolios are a collection of those uh, uh, products for easy management. You can create customized portfolios and selectively grant access to end users for provisioning. Admins can grant access to products that users can launch without needing to give users direct access to the underlying AWS services that, that uh, services that provision those resources. So you have complete control of who is uh, allowed to use what AWS services, right? So this is how it, it happens, uh, the, the whole provisioning process. When you create best practices, it, it, uh, the, the governance uh, at scale is, is automated using uh, a service catalog. You create best practices templates with AWS cloud formation, for example, having EM, Amazon EMR or EC2 or S3. Create AWS service catalog products in the management AWS control tower account. You can distribute products via AWS organization to all of your AWS control tower managed accounts like this. Uh, you have a spoke account. You can create local portfolio in your spoke accounts, uh, import the hub portfolio pro products and add product inputted to the portfolio. You can inherit, it, uh, inherit constraints, tags, set up uh, 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 launch and template constraints, and add local tags as well. You can also grant the end user to access local portfolio. Right? So you don't have to create, uh, uh, you know, you don't have to repeat all these provisioning process uh, for number of accounts. That's why you have we have created an automation uh, uh, automated processes with uh, taking uh, uh, best parts of AWS service service catalog. Finally, how are you going to operate it? You can start. You can monitor resources and workloads from AWS Control Tower dashboard. Uh, you can audit resource config uh, audit resource configurations, user access, and policy enforcement. You can take actions, uh, uh, like operational actions on res resources, and you can have dashboard uh, that's by which you can continuously uh, provide visibility into your multi-account environment. Uh, this is a sample uh, image of the AWS control tower, uh, control tower dashboard, whereby you can see the enforcements, violations, and what's actually happening in, uh, in, in all your accounts in different re regions. Now we have talked about governance. Now let's jump into the compliance. Uh, we know that compliance is there, it is required, but it is a bit challenging when we are talking about in a traditional environment. Uh, why we need an audit or compliance in the first place? The traditional approach to compliance uh, management is uh, further complicated by compliance frameworks. And sometimes customer, customers have to comply with multiple frameworks. Ultimately, the objective of the framework is more or less the same, right? That they require a baseline of security control, such, such as IAM, data production, infrastructure monitoring, lo logging, and incident res response to be 
uh, to be uh, you know configured and should not be changed. Let's take a one step back and see how the classic V2 managed compliance is, 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 is happens. For example, in month of July, you start measuring your uh, your your resources right uh, against the metric. Uh, same month, you go to panic mode because the next month is your schedule audit. In August, you really freak out and you just pull everybody, you know, please come in and solve it. I want this report, that report, fix this, fix that uh, from the last audit. Then you finally sit with the auditors and pray that it all goes okay and you get, uh, you know, a sign off on your audit. But then after you spend two to four week, weeks or even months to fix the issues that were, uh, you know, uh, uh, that, uh, that were uh, identified during your audit, a compliance audit. So why it is, a, what is the current approach to co uh, compliance and why is cumbersome? The reason is that, and why it's not cannot be scaled into the cloud is, it's because uh, it it follows sampling approach, right? It is based on point in time assessment. It's not it's not like it happens once in an year or twice or every quarter, but it's not happening like an, it continuously. Uh, team uh, similar team swings into action uh, weeks before scheduled audits. Isolated technologies, uh, resulting in integration issues, uh, siloed approach. Uh, for example, the expert, expertise, knowledge of compliance frameworks are not shared with developers and operators. Difficult to track changes, right? And, and especially if you want to, to track changes in the live, uh, uh, in the, in the real, near real, real time. Um, inaccurate evidence collection, of course, uh, that leads to issues and problems that requires fix and that, 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 that takes most of the time when, it, uh, when you are maintaining your compliance. So what we need, how can we fix this? We know that the biggest drawback of having a traditional compliance is in the cloud is that increasing delta between your current and to be infrastructure. This will continue to happen as compliance regulations are not assessed continuously. Over time, uh, as you add more complexity to your application infrastructure, the drift keeps on getting bigger and bigger. And that's where the continuous compliance, the concept kicks in whereby you test your infrastructure and application continuously, right? Uh, to, and you build controls in the development pipelines in a DevOps manner, you establish drift detection and remediation for as a resilient a security a, a, a posture and to stay on the top of a uh, desired state of your infrastructure. You need to establish automated processes and continuously check if you are compliant and regularly generate reports. With continuous compliance, you know who changed what and at what time and where the change originated from, originated from in the real in, in the near real time. You continuously detect, remediate, and automate your applications and infrastructure by having uh, a continuous compliance. But how to achieve it? Automation is the key here because anything done manually is not scalable, repeatable, reliable, and consistent as an automated process as it come, becomes hard to keep track of your resources inventory, right? Uh, their uh, relationships. Uh, furthermore, it becomes painful to attract numerous compliance requirements in spreadsheets. You know, uh, we used to uh, manage uh, spreadsheets a lot when it comes to com a com a compliance. So automate as much as possible. Establish processes that scale with expanding business along with your infrastructure. This is how you can achieve your compliance objectives and, your, uh, and, and, and enable your org organization. This is a high level over overview of continuous compliance, how it works. Standard to continuous compliance is the compliance as a code. Whereby you implement, what I mean is that you implement your compliance rules as a code that is linked to your comp uh, configuration management and that compliance rules engine is basically continuously, uh, you know, looking into the configuration management, which is getting real near real time updates. And if something goes wrong, it takes action by notifying the other teams uh, and or taking the remediation action. So having said that, we talked about uh, continuous compliance. We talked about how traditionally is difficult and uh, how automation is the key. So how can we enable, how can we help our customers uh, to achieve continuous compliance in cloud so that they become a business enablement function? 
When it comes to compliance in cloud at scale, you have multiple questions. For example, what is the latest configuration uh, uh, state of your resources? Are my resources properly configured? What relationship exists between my resources? For example, if you have one EC2 instance, how many EBS volumes or storage volumes does it have? What configuration changes occurred in the past? Which resources have violated your compliance uh, policies? And so how can you get noti uh, uh, notified or remediate automatically when the resource or resources get out of compliance? So AWS Config is a service that will enable you to become a business enabler function in your organization from compliance perspective. AWS Config is, it first discovers the supported AWS resources that exist in your account and generates a configuration item for each resource. AWS Config also generates a configuration item when the configuration of a resource changes and it maintains historical records of the configuration item of your resources. From the time you start the configuration, reorder, uh, by default, AWS Config creates configuration items for every supported resources uh, in your AWS environment in the region. If you don't, uh, uh, if you don't uh, want AWS Config to create a, re uh, a configuration item for all supported res resources, you can specify the specific re resource that you want. For example, if you want to stick to, uh, to S3, for example, uh, simple storage su service or Elastic Compute Cloud EC2, you can stick to it. Don't want any other re 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 resources to, uh, to be monitored. It was config as configuration management, right? But it needs a rules engine. The compliance contains compliance needs a rule engine. It was config evaluate the configuration at a setting for your AWS resources. You do you do this by having AWS config rules, which present your ideal configuration settings. AWS config provides uh, customizable, predefined rules called manage rules as well. At the moment, we have uh, uh, around ninety plus pre built rules that you as a customer can use. Uh, to achieve your, your, your compliance uh, objectives. Apart from that, we also offer, as a part of service, something called conformance packs. Now, the conformance pack is a collection of AWS config rules. Maybe you don't want one by, uh, uh, like, two, three rules. You want a complete pack of rules bundled together with the, its remediation action. So, conformance pack can be easily deployed as a single entity in an account and in a region across organization in an AWS organization. These are uh, uh, conformance packs are immutable. What I mean is that these they are individual rules cannot be changed. First of all, after the pack, regardless of access or account permissions, when deployed by an organization mass, uh, uh, management account, it cannot be modified by organization member accounts. So I talked about scale. How do you gonna do this at scale if you have multiple accounts and in multiple regions? You do it by having a, a multi-region data aggregation feature in available in AWS Config, whereby you can have AWS Config rules deployed from your management account to your all your child accounts in different regions. It aggregates all the results and it shows you in the centralized dashboard and you can also take action on those uh, results. So what are the next steps? Next steps, at the next step, I would say you just simply, yes, you, you can use this, these services, but before that, you have to create your cloud security policy. You have to perform AWS service due diligence. You have, you have to create automated security patterns that how the, the, uh, the automation is gonna help you and auto automation is gonna help you out uh, for to achieve your continuous com com compliance. And finally, you have to develop your continuous compliance program. With this, I thank you. Uh, for attending this um, uh, this session, I hope it was helpful and useful as well. For any queries, please uh, uh, reach out uh, to me using my email address. Take care.